we can use a PWM DAC and let's review some of these concepts here. We have two ways of doing a DAC. We can use the SAR method, the one that you just saw in the videos, the previous videos, and we can use also implement a DAC using this PWM method. So now let's focus on this PWM method and see how it works. And pretty much works by generating a PWM signal and then passing through a low pass filter that is going to give you just the DC component of your signal. So if I look at the low pass fil filter, the frequency domain, uh, your square wave is going to have a bunch of harmonics here, but it's going to have a DC component. And if I filter, if I apply a low pass filter, I can eliminate all these high frequencies and just allow the DC component to pass. So how do you do this low pass filter? You can do a passive RC circuit. So just connect a resistor with a capacitor connected to ground. And this is going to uh, implement this low pass filter. There are some challenges on implementing a PWM DAC and All About Circuits does a very good job explaining that. I highly recommend to read, to go over this article for more details. Pretty much we have a ripple and response with one pole. So this is just a one pole filter. And what values are you going to pick to position that cutoff frequency? If we pick a higher frequency, the C1 charges fast, so it tracks the, the PWM faster, but it has a lot of ripple. And if I want to get, array, get, get rid of that ripple, I go to a smaller frequency closer to my DC, but then C, C1 charges slower because of this resistor. And in that case, it's just going to, have, it's just going to take more time to settle down. Um, so that is a trade-off. A lower cutoff frequency means less ripple, but a longer settling time. A higher cutoff frequency means more ripple in a short settling time. So you need to think again about your application and decide what is going to be um, sufficient for the needs that you need or for your needs. Then <clears throat> we can actually increment the poles. We can do two poles like by either applying an inductor or another capacitor in a different configuration and this specific one is a passive RL circuit and same thing applies here we can go with a higher frequency and we can see that it starts like less ripple just starts going a little bit going to settling on your DC component but if I go a smaller frequency you see that starts like behaving good um, the trade-off of this one is that higher hurdle it definitely improves the perform the performance, but they also increase the cost and complexity of your circuit because you need to buy more components. Um, so again, probably a PWM DAC with just a one order, one pole is sufficient for your needs, um, but it's up to your application. So what it's in reality, like external DACs are so cheap and so good that might as well to use an external DAC and use that to generate your your um, your waves. There is also an easy way to improve what you just saw with uh, with just an RC filter, with, which it is to increase the frequency of your PWM. And this is a technique that is widely used. So you just do 30 more times than the frequency that you need. And then you will guarantee that your um, low pass filter is not going to um, interfere with your signal. Let's go over uh, an example. You guys can use week for PWM code for this and attach a low pass RC filter to the output pin to the green LED. In order to design this low pass filter, um, you can do the math by yourself or you can just use an online tool here that does a good job. You put the capacitor, you put your cutoff frequency, sorry, you put your um, the frequency of your PWM, you put the capacitor and then you will just um, parameterize the rest of the circuit and tells you what is the value of resistance that you need. Um, in terms of frequency domain, this is what it's happening. I put this and it's going to cut at this cutoff frequency if I use these values on my um, circuit here. In the time domain, I'm expecting to have this analog value. So let's see this in action.
Now let's cover PWM deck as a wave generation. So the previous video shows uh, an analog value uh, be like putting out on the deck, but what if I want to generate a sine wave or a triangle wave? So what do I need to do? Well, in that case, I need to encode the sine wave on my PWM. And this is an example on a PWM wave that if you feed this and then you put an RC filter is going to give you a sine wave. This is just with 12 points. If you have more points, it's going to have more resolution. And the code is pretty much this one. What we do is I have here two tables, one a lookup table with values for 12 points and another one for 24 points for a sine wave. And uh, pretty much all you need to do is uh, call this function wave generator pass the value zero and it's going to render the sine wave just following those points. Now, how do we do the sawtooth wave encoding? So we encode slightly different. For the way for the sawtooth, what you do is you increment the PWM and steady increment, so you don't change the the amount of your PWM. It's just a constant uh, increment amount, and it's going to go up until it reaches 100% of your duty cycle, and then you suddenly go to zero, and that's how you do the cutoff of your sawtooth wave. Uh, the triangle wave is a little bit it's just an extension of the sawtooth what you do is you go up and now instead of going zero on your duty cycle you just go from um, the 75 or 100 percent to zero whatever you want to do here on a triangle wave so if i look at the code um, it's going to be case two and case three of your wave generator um, function and so this one is doing the sawtooth so it just goes from zero to the max and then it cuts when it repeats again just goes back to zero. This one uh, just goes from zero to max and then from max to zero to do the triangle part. Very straightforward. Um, I'm doing increments of 50. You can play around with this. You can have more or less resolution. Just going to influence your frequency here. Um, let's just see this in action. <laughs> 